greatness. Trying to make it, I was stuck in the matrix. Yeah, I'm striving for greatness. Trying to make it, I was stuck in the matrix. Yeah, I'm striving for greatness. Trying to make it, I was stuck in the matrix. Yeah, I'm striving for greatness. Trying to make it, I was stuck in the matrix. Uh, man, my auntie passed last night. This is a sad life. I'm trying to get my cash. Yo, what's good? It's your boy, BDL. I am back with a galactical demonstration. If you're new to this channel, hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. But today, we're going to be talking about the movie Guardians of the Galaxy and how it's connected to the mythology of the Yakub story, who was a master grafter and a supreme geneticist who grafted many different Mount Nebula extraterrestrial species and also mythological creatures that come from these subterranean kingdoms when you're talking about Argartha. And he's also the inception point and the origin points of the Canaanite bloodline when he grafted them in existence in 4086 BC on the island of Patmos, right? So with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we finna get straight to it. We about to get straight to it. Now, as I was saying before, you need to watch this movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, because it's telling you about the true inception point of how you know this planet is basically an experimentation planet for uh, genetic splicing, when you're talking about quantum cloning, all these things is uh, basically a hub for uh, to bring different species to this planet and to take different species and take them to different star systems, right? So this is the movie that you got to see. So now when you're talking about the creation story, right? This guy right here, his name is High Evolutionary. He is synonymous to uh, the guy who was Yaku, right? Who was Jacob in the Bible, or um, when you're talking about um, the mythology that was connected to the nation of Islam, when you're talking about the big head scientist, Yaku, right? So this is the big head scientist, right? As you notice, he has a widow's peak, which is a malnevolent trait, right? And his bro brother at the bottom right here is Yushat. Now, uh, when you're talking about Yaku, you know, he is basically the inception point of the Canaanite bloodline who basically grafted them in, into existence to have uh, the 6,000 year uh, verification period and dominion over the indigenous people on the planet, which is why when you go to right here, it tells you about he used uh, eugenics, which is also connected to democracy, which is also connected to the Canaanite bloodline. He used uh, eugenics, human uh, gravitation experiments, and he used the black gene and he broke it down and he amalgamated with many different uh animal genetics is also now this is also conducive to everything that's going on when you're talking about the usurpation process of the indigenous ones that's connected to the bloodline of inky they got their land usurped from it so this is why you see yaku right here politicking with a blackamoor because the blackamoors are the ones who work with uh the bloodline of enlil right who are your so-called black nobility and they use uh artificial religious systems to usurp the landmass from us. So that's why Yakub right here at the bottom, he has given them uh, the edification on how to use that process to where he can have the 6,000 year Canaanite bloodline to have dominion over the people on the planet because that's why Yakub said verbatim, he said that I will make a group of people who will rule over, rule over you for 6,000 years, but the 6,000 years is up. So this is why this story and this movie is also uh, synonymous to everything that's going on right now when you're talking about uh, the metamorphic shift of the planet and how the planet is going from a uh, third dimensional state to a fifth dimensional state because it's the end of a cycle. It's the end of the cycle and the end of the beast system. So it's a transmutation process by going from a matriarch back into, uh, by going from a, a, a patriarch back into a, a matriarch. 
So that's what's going on right now when you're talking about that. So now since we, when you look at the movie, when you watch the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, it is basically showing you how how evolutionary, who was basically the personification of Yaku, he was uh, using many different genetical experiments uh, on his planet. And his planet uh, was basically conducive to uh, planet Earth, but everything was inverted. So the inversion in itself, meaning that it goes against uh, the natural laws of nature, right? So he was taking uh, many different beings from our planet and many different star systems in other galaxies and other planets as well. He was taking their genetics and he was using it for quantum cloning. He was using it for uh, brain mapping. When you're talking about the stem receiver and uh, nanogenetic mind control, when you're using these clones and many different uh, animals to amalgamate with each other to where he can create many different species and other extraterrestrials to where he can bring them back to his planet. And he was also using many different forms of uh, uh, transhumanism also. So you got to get this book right here called Caverns, Cauldrons, and the Concealed Creatures, a study of the subterranean mysteries in history, folklore, myth uh, by William, I mean, by Michael Mott. So you got to get this book right here because it's also telling you about how you have many different species on the planet who live on inside these underground uh tunnel systems I already broke that down when you're talking about the deep underground military bases which is uh connected to the military industrial complex right which is controlled by the canaanite bloodline that yakub created right this is also another book that you got to get it's called this book is called beast man and gods by ferdinand osendowski right now with that being said, now I got to show you something that's part of the book. Because in the book, it's telling you about a prophecy that's going to be taking place, right? It's telling you about a prophecy uh, made by a Dalai Lama. Because I told you when you look at the uh, the Argartha uh, video that I put out probably like last month, you know, uh, all this stuff is connected to the city of Shambhala. So this is also a part of the prophecy that was propagated in 1890, right? And he basically said uh, in the book, this book was written in 1913, by the way, right? And he's talking about a prophecy uh, that's based on the year of 2029, right? So let me get the scroll in here. So yes, the prophecy in itself is talking about that afterwards of 80 years of war and destruction that in 2029 there will be the peoples and the creatures of Argarti that will come up from the subterranean caverns, uh, uh, caverns and come up to the earth that's what he's basically talking about so he's basically talking about in this book in the year of 2029 afterwards there will be 80 years of war and destruction and the peoples of Argartha will come up to the subterranean from the subterranean caverns of the earth and these mythological creatures right now, this is also synonymous to this video that I'm getting ready to show you right now. That passage that I just showed you. So, like I said, you got to get this book right here by Ferdinand Owendowski, Beast, Man, and Gods. Right? Now, I'm going to be showing you a guy that was part of uh, Dr. York's congregation. You need to see this right here. I'm going to play the video. Express for joyful sightings and no rampant. Worldwide. Everyday occurrences. These are flesh eating predators from other star systems. Here, as hunters of exotic creatures and animals on safari. So he's basically talking about <clears throat> during this time period. There's supposed to be some type of an invasion. Now, some people call it, you know, uh, that's being engineered and orchestrated by Project Blue Bean. That's not what I'm talking about. There is a prophecy in all these esoteric teachings in these schools of uh, these mystery schools. They're talking about beings that come from the planet Earth. I mean, under the planet Earth and coming to the surface to feed. Right. So this is where he's talking about uh, the prophetic uh, events that's going to be taking place 
when you talking about from the uh, the great purification period. And then when you have the the red star and the blue star, Kachina, when you have the supernova and the blue star, uh, the supernova and the great balls of fire, uh, when you have the spontaneous combustion of the red sun. So that's just, this is what he's talking about. So right before all that stuff happens, you're going to have beings that come from hollow earth coming to the surface to feed, to, uh, you know, have some type of dominion over uh, the three dimensional paradigm. And these beings, like I said, the inception point of them, a lot of them were created by Yakub inside these uh, cavern systems because Yakub is not only the father of the Canaanite bloodline when he genetically spliced them in, uh, into existence in 4086 BC in the island of Patmos. He's also the father of many different species that he genetically grafted because, like I said, he was a supreme geneticist. I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to play the video. He as hunters of exotic creatures and animals on safari or agreeable or disagreeable scientists and geneticists from other galaxies who are marking their territories just like all predators do. They are looking for test subjects for genetic engineering or for bizarre experimentation or a thunder to supply for their star system or for slaves or just trophies. Once the man gently be released with their children, this physical realm would be up for grabs. A first come first serve three for all grab because time would be of the essence. A, a, a winner takes all grab and all you can eat and all you can eat smorgasbord and a merciless, unencumbered, savage bloodbath. Do you get the picture? Then, here comes the meteorite showers, and the mad rush to get off the surface of the planet before, with their bounty before the showers hit. Those that escape being captured will be totally annihilated by the purging fires. If you think this is a joke, then go ahead and laugh while you can. Your underground bunkers and your primitive weaponry would be no match, useless against their advanced laser technologies and their advanced tunnel tunneling, teleportation, and interdimensional technologies. There will be no safe soul or ultimate protection because you will be attempting to cheat nature, King Kong. Wishful thinking. The law is. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. There are no amendments to the nature's laws. You can forget that. So with that being said, that's why, you know what I'm saying, you have all this stuff that's taking place right now, right? So now we're going to go back to the slides. So like I said, get this book called Beasts. Uh, Beast, Man, and Gods by Ferdinand Owendows Osendowski, right? Now, this is a map of all the um, these Mount, De Mount Nevolent creatures that were genetically spliced into existence by Yaku. This is a mapping system. This is a folklore and supernatural uh, phenomenon, and they're basically uh, based on station points where you have all these national parks all around the United States, right? And all these national parks in the United States have tunnel systems. And when you go to these national parks, there's a reason why they don't allow you to have dogs, right? Because dogs are able to, uh, you know, use their uh, their ability to, you know, find different things and, you know, hidden uh, cavern systems all around, you know, the planet and stuff like that. Dogs are good for, you know, for scavenging purposes. So this is why dogs is not, you know, they're not able to go to these national parks. So this is like on the left side right here. These are all the national parks of where you see these Mount Nevolent uh, extraterrestrial species that come from these tunnel systems at these national park uh, locations all around the planet. Right. So this is all the, you know, uh, the station points. Because I told you all these national parks have tunnel systems underground. Right. Which is not a by accident. So now I'm going to be showing you some pictures showing you the reality that genetic splicing is real. This is what you call a tiny Atacama human 
uh, skeleton alien, right? This was uh, bought out back in the 1990s, right? Then you have, I'm just basically showing you the reality that genetic splicing actually exists, right? Which is not a coincidence. Because a lot of these things that you see, they wash up on shore. A lot of these things are found dead because a lot of these uh, these uh, genetically grafted entities and these clone uh, these clone entities basically have a life expectancy. Some of them, if they're not of the original uh, grafter or whatever, some of these uh, entities only have a life expectancy of three years. So I'm gonna keep going. Uh, then you got things like this. All these are basically hybrid entities that was genetically spliced. And this is another entity that was found in the national park. This thing is about nine feet tall, by the way. And it has superhuman speed. So these are the species, right? These are the Mount Neville species that was genetically spliced into existence because I told you, all these things that was, you know, when you're talking about Yaku, he did not only just graft and genetically splice um, humans, right, into existence. When you're talking about the inception of the Canaanite, he also grafted creatures. And it shows you in the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, right? You got the New Jersey Devil. You got the uh, the Chapacahara. And then you got the Ogopogo. Then you got the Wendigo. You got all these things. You got all these entities, then you got the Dragar. You know, all these things are all around the planet. Then you got gens, many different gens and demons, because really what people have a misconception about when you're talking about disembodied spirits, when you're talking about um, shapeshifters, when you're talking about uh, ghosts and stuff like that, these are beings that live in the cataract dimension, which is the fourth dimension, because you can only see 10% uh, of the electromagnetic spectrum. So you can only see certain things with the physical eyes, but you cannot activate the spiritual eye. So that's why the metamorphic shift on the planet is conducive to the fact that it's going to open you up on a biological level. And it's going to open up your mind to where you can see these entities because you're going through a dimensional shift. So this is why, you know, this uh, that's actually conducive to the prophetic uh, divination that was uh, propagated by uh, the Dalai Lama in 1890 when he said that these entities was going to come from these subterranean kingdoms in 2029 and come to the surface to feed, right? So a lot of these gens and demons, these ghouls, you know, they're actually reptilians that were genetically spliced, greys that were genetically spliced, insectoids that were genetically spliced. This is what you got going on. So you got, you know, uh, I don't know the names of the great majority of these. So because a lot of these folklores and these uh, mythological creatures, you know, they came from uh, different cultures and heritage and uh, religious systems. So you got the hen and you got the madrid, which is uh, another name for a genie, which is a jinn. What is a jinn, right? A jinn, a genie which is a demonic entity that you make a pact with and it give to where you can reap the benefits of uh, the luxuries and the incentives of the three-dimensional world. When you're talking about fame and fortune and things of that nature, right? These are spirits, right? These are demonic forces that was genetically spliced. And not only, you know what I'm saying? Like Jakku, he also gave them the government, the ability to, uh, genetically spliced he gave them the technology to do so because i told you yakub said that i will create a group of people that will rule you for six thousand years that's what he said verbatim and who's the uh who's the one who controls everything as far as on the three-dimensional level it's the canaanite who's being controlled by the black nobility which is why on that picture i showed you you had uh yakub politicking with uh, a black nobility uh blackamore he's the one who gave them the edification so, like I said, you got the Arabian uh, mythological creatures. You got the dog heads, the hat tiff. You, you know, you got the tree beans, the waka waka, right? So, you got many different, you know, 
creatures and people seeing these creatures all around the planet. You got talking about Mothman. Uh, all these beings come from Hollow Earth. So you got the supernatural creatures and beasts and beings from world myth uh, mythology, right? Like I said, you got the the beasts of the Bray of the Road. You got the Wendigo. Then you got the Skinwalkers. Then you got the beast of uh, Busco. All these are genetically spliced entities. And then, then you also have so the great majority of them, they, like I said, they came from different star systems, but they're basically encapsulated inside these underground tunnel systems, right? So you got the Lizard Man, uh, Scape of Or, which is a Draconian Reptilian. Then you got the Dover Demon. Why does it keep doing this? And then you got uh, the Flatwoods Monster. You got the New Jersey Devil. You got the Mothman at the top. So this is not a coincidence because when you get to um, the Mesopotamia mythology, it's, it's showing you the reality of uh, different species uh, species that were genetically spliced, which are extraterrestrial species, right? So that's the misconception when you're talking about creatures and monsters. They're, real, they're really uh, extraterrestrial species that were genetically spliced into existence and created because the only real... Uh, extraterrestrial beings that we have on our planet or in this, you know, coming into our planet are Anunnaki beings. And they are the ones who genetically grafted. There's a video that I got of a guy who died and, he and he's talking about how um, when he seen uh, the Anunnaki in his, uh, in his dream state when he was uh, basically uh, in a coma because he was in the process of dying at the time, he, he said that he's seen that uh, these Anunnaki beings were in laboratories and lab coats genetically splicing many different entities on the planet, right? He was genetically splicing. They were genetically splicing them. So you got to watch that video. It's in my, uh, uh, somewhere on my YouTube channel. It's about a man who died and had an uh, encounter with the Anunnaki. So now I'm going to be showing you this video here. We get the grades, you know, about the little short grades that act like they're real. This video is kind of low, so you got to turn it up or listen very closely to what she's talking about because she's talking about many different species of extraterrestrials and uh, creatures and, and things of that nature, which is also synonymous to the fact that I told you when you watch the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, how, how evolutionary he was using uh, cybernetics and uh, quantum cloning and uh, genetic splicing to create these entities. We get the grades, you know, about the little short grades that act like they're robotic or android or insectoid in their actions that don't seem to have individuality. The little workers, and we're going to talk about those to some degree. You get insectoid looking creatures, tall, thin, normally very quiet, very skinny arms, uh, two to three digits. Uh, triangular shaped head with insectoid eyes. I've seen them, my son's seen them, many of you have probably seen them. I've talked to a few people here that we've seen. Reptoids, very robust creatures, normally tall, very um, scaly, smooth in one direction, sticky in the other when you rub over the skin pattern. Um, broad, webbed, and they sky have teeth, unlike the little braids. Then you get the white humanoid looking, not human looking, but humanoid looking, tall, thin, white, sometimes with very deeply wrinkled faces, with round eyes rather than the slant. The beings that she's talking about, she is talking about the Dayros, who are the detrimental robotoids, who also live in the caverns of the earth, and they were genetically spliced into existence because the malnevolent son of the Tayro was grafted out of them, right? The disagreeable side. Eyes. And these two have now set open. When my husband was 11 months old and was abducted, he was allowed to put his finger in the mouth of one of these creatures. And he said it didn't have teeth, have teeth. It had spongy, soft tissue, sort of like in a whale's mouth. You get blue humanoid looking figures very often reported. Not green necessarily, although those do come up, but more often blue than green. There are numerous reports of things that the abductees describe as dwarves or elves or trolls, very small. Those beings are called 
these bins that she's talking about are called the Taiwanese. These some of these bins is where you get your uh your concept of the movie, the Ewoks, right? And these these Ewoks were basically in uh Star Wars as well. And uh, a lot of those bins, uh, the Taiwanese, they were basically the gatekeepers of all uh, the pyramids on the planet, and they were the uh, pro uh, protectors of children. That's what she's talking about. These bins right here. Thank you, thank you, creatures. And then there's several varieties of completely human-looking individuals that show up in some of these accounts. Usually, they're either blonde and beautiful, what we call the Nordic, the Pleiadian. Are they're tall, very commanding, very much in charge, dark haired humans. So the dark haired beings that she's talking about, I told you, she's gonna be talking about how they have a widow speak, which is a malnevolent trait. And, and the malnevolency that's connected to the mythology of that. So this person that you're looking at right now is Halal, who is the son of Tarnush and Mylita, and who basically rebelled against the order of Anu. So that's why one third of the galaxy went against the order of Anu. So this is where you get your concept of the 200 fallen angels who came down to the planet, went inside the caverns of the earth. Then this is when you have the inception point of when uh, Yakub was born. He came to the surface, genetically spliced all these beings into existence. And then this is when he gave the Canaanite the 6,000 year verification period to have the million of the people who are with the seeds of Enki. So this is what's going on right now. So I'm going I'm to rewind it back. For a little bit. Are they tall, very commanding, very much in charge, dark haired humans with this widow pink hairline? Sometimes it looks artificial, sometimes it looks even painted on. But nonetheless, those are the two most commonly reported human looking type of creatures. So they're like, so those are like I said, these are the two the, the fall, these are the disagreeable Anunnaki's. That's what she's talking about. Those are your 200 fallen angels. When you watch the last video, these are your Saturnians, what I was talking about, the the, the dark head, uh, the, the malnevolent ones, when you're talking about Dracula, right? Dracula, you see the widow's peak, Dracula, Draco, Draconian, basically black humanoid uh, shapeshifter, Draconian reptilian archons who control everything in the three-dimensional paradigm. So this is why when you go to Yaku, right? When you go to Yaku, what does he have on his head? He has a widow's peak, right? Shout out to the young elder. He also the one who pointed the widow's peak aspect out as well. So like I said, you see Yaku politicking with a black or more, a dirty more, who the ones who created, you know, uh, the implementation of the Inquisition in four, uh, 1468 and gave uh, Queen Isabella the rights to overthrow the indigenous Moors that's connected to the geographical landmass of America, right? So this story and this, this genetically splicing and all this stuff, the extraterrestrials, this is all interconnected. You can't leave out one part of you know the mythology out. It's all connected. All of it's connected. Because like I said, Yaku is the one who genetically spliced the Canaanite beast man into existence in 486 BC on the island of Patmos, right? And he's also the one who gave the edification to the Blackamoor to give to uh, the Canaanite, right? Because I told you, when you go to El's Holy Angel, when you get the transliteration of it, of 1717 in the Book of Revelation, it says the evil reptilian gave power to the beast. Who is the beast? It's the Canaanite. So all this stuff is interconnected because like I said, he's responsible for uh, the inception and the origin point of the Canaanites and he's also responsible for grafting a lot of these mythological creatures into existence who live inside these cavern systems. Because when you understand uh, the inception point of where Yaku came from, his people came from inner earth, right? You got the Danaku and then you have the Shiu tribe. They came from inner earth and they came to the surface. He came to the surface once he rebelled against King Kyofor because he wanted to create a group of people to have dominion over us, which is why we're spiritually subjugated uh we're subjugated by uh media right we're subjugated uh by uh the government which controls our biological systems when you're talking about their system of control through eugenics where you're controlled on every facet on the planet which is created um by yaku 
who is the uh the supreme geneticist. I'm gonna play the video. Most commonly reported human looking type of pictures. Dead relatives are sometimes involved in these scenarios. And I'm giving one instance from Masquerade of Angels. Ted Rice, who's the subject of the book, was abducted with his grandmother when he was eight years old. They were both given a liquid to drink. It very much altered their perceptions and their control. In fact, it acted somewhat as an aphrodisiac, and this has been reported in numerous other cases. The reptoid creatures approached the grandmother and wanted to have a sexual encounter with her. And she said, I don't do that. I've only ever done that with my husband. And my husband's been dead six years, so I don't do that. Within a few minutes, they brought a dead husband into the room. And they engaged in sex. And in the middle of the sexual encounter, she realized it wasn't the dead husband at all. But the image was strong enough to convince her in the beginning that it was. So, the, so she's basically talking about these beings that were genetically spliced and stuff like that. A lot of them have the ability of shape shifting technology when you're talking about Dracos. Also, celebrities show up. This part ain't important. So I'm going to switch it off. But yeah, this is. Uh, so now when you're talking about. Uh, Cloning. Cloning technology. Like I said, you got di you got different types of cloning. You have a uh, quantum cloning, right? Which is basically a form of technology that's created identical to many different copies of the genetical structure of a human. So this is also, like I said, it's connected to cybernetics to where it can basically mimic the pattern of the genetical sequence of the being to where it can graft its own self out, right? So you got quantum cloning. Then you got brain mapping, which is where it mimics the pattern of the neurotransmitters and the melanocytes that's inside the neurological faculties, right? So this clone can be created using information and implanted with the donor's consciousness when you're talking about horizontal gene transfer, where you transmute the consciousness and you take that consciousness and you put it inside another uh, biological vessel, right? So you got gene editing uh, cloning technology. So which this is basically a scientific human cloning that uh, basically can achieve an advanced gene editing technology. So this is where you get, you know, many different graftings or whatever. So like I said, the great majority of people on this planet, you know, they're we're all basically a genetic anomaly. We don't really have an homogenous origin. Some of us come from the original types, uh, the Hoplo groups of the Anunnaki, that you got some, a great majority of us that was also genetically spliced into existence who are uh, connected to nanogenetic mind control when you're talking about NPCs, NPCs and bots. So that's why is they they just came out with a, a publication recently saying that at least seventy five percent of people on the planet don't have a consciousness. So then you got cloning pods. The cloning pods uh, could be achieved in the special pods and machines and contain genetic material of the donor and the program to create the clone and using a tech reprograms genetic material. So these are many different cloning and genetically splicing uh, types of systems that they use these uh, that they use in these underground tunnel systems, right? Because I told you the big head scientist Yaku is synonymous to high evolutionary in the movie Guardians of the Galaxy. Now I'm going to show you a guy who used to be in the military. You know he's also going to be talking about you know these news articles that they try to hide when you're talking about these uh, malnevolent entities and these uh, mythological creatures that will genetically splice into existence. I'm going to play the video. Start with this here. So scientists are baffled as alien-like creatures begin appearing all over the planet. 
So it says scientists have been left baffled at the large number of alien-like creatures that have begun appearing in seemingly random places all over the world. In the news recently, there have been numerous reports of mysterious, unidentifiable creatures appearing in countries all over the planet. It says, uh, this is end of the AmericanDream.com reports. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Last week, a extremely an extremely bizarre creature that looks like an orc from Lord of the Rings washed up on the shore of the Sinai Peninsula. The gruesome remains of a creature that looks like an orc from Lord of the Rings has been found washed up on the shores of Egypt. Andrea Judd, 39, found a mysterious eyeless corpse burying its, burying its teeth, sharp teeth, on a beach at the Gaber El Bent on the Sinai Peninsula. And just like the movie Monster from Alien, it had two sets of jaws, one within and the other for hunting its prey. Initially, I thought the creature was quite small when I first saw the photo of it, but the woman that discovered it says that it had a head that was bigger than her fist. Hey. Wow. So apparently the woman said she was surprised by how big the creature was with the head being bigger than her fist. It was gruesome to look at and reminded me of the reality of death, she said. My initial imp impression was that it was being, it was a being who suffered a rather horrible death. I couldn't figure out what kind of creature it was. And yes, it is a, it is a weird looking creature for sure. You know, but as we're finding out, part of it could be the experimentation that has been going on for years and years in these tunnels and other places. I mean, you're, you know, we, we've all seen the movie or heard about it at least, uh, the Island of Dr. Moreau. And, I, and I've, I've thought for years that there's all kinds of, of scientists and stuff and, and super wealthy people paying these scientists to, to do all these this weird experimentation. And, um, you know, it's just, yeah. I mean, so without, you know, he ain't really saying much at the end. But like I said, you know, this is showing you the reality of, you know, how uh, genetic splicing and everything took place on the planet, you know, because uh, genetic splicing in itself, like I said, Yakub, he did not just create, you know, Yakub, who is the personification of high evolutionary, he did not just create humans. He created uh, many different Mount Neville extraterrestrial species, creatures that lives inside these caverns of the earth. Right. He created, you know, a great majority of them. And he gave that cloning technology, that genetical manipulation technology. He gave it to the Canaanites who control our uh, governmental system in this three dimensional matrix. Right. So, like I said, that's why the eugenics in itself was created by him. And who controls eugenics on the Democratic side? Right. The deep state shadow government. Right. That is your shadow government because I told you, democracy, when you break down the suffix of the word crossy, you get kratos, kratos is equates to chronos, chronos is chronology. Chronology is when you trapped in artificial time analysis mechanism to where you trapped in time of the Saturn moon matrix. Because the Saturn moon matrix, Saturn is where the inception point of the fallen ones, where they came from and came down to this planet. When you're talking about your black nobility, right? So that's what's going on. So watch this movie here, Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a very good movie. It's telling you about, you know, uh, genetic splicing. And if you notice at the end of the movie, I mean, during the movie, the raccoon, who was a coon, your so-called uh, misnomer title that is uh, being used as a racial slur towards black people, he was the only one that was genetically spliced by high evolutionary to where he had a consciousness. He was able to, he was the only uh, entity that was created by high, by high evolutionary who is Yakub. He's the only one that had a consciousness to where he had a sense of individuality, right? He had a internal monologue. He had the ability to use his neurological faculties and to, um, you know, create his own reality and think for itself. That's because he had what? 
melanin. Coons have melanin, right? Which is a racial slur. So with all that being said, um, I, it was hard for me to get through this video. I got pink eye from my son, so I'm kind of struggling. I was supposed to put out this video uh, a few days ago, but I wasn't able to do it because, you know, I had pink eye and I'm still in the process of having pink eye. But I'm starting it's starting to get a little bit better because I can open up my eyes and everything now. So with all that with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching this video. Get this video out there because this video is actually uh, acclimated to all the other videos that I put out. Because, like I said, this is one big esoteric pile of information that they try to hide from us. So when you watch all these videos, it's giving you another piece to the puzzle of what's actually going on, right? Because I showed you this video is also synonymous to the fact that, you know, in 1890, like I said, it's a prophetic event that's going to be taking place when you're going to have the beings from the subterranean kingdoms come up to the surface in 2029 to feed. Right. Because like I said, that's when the planet is going to be in uh, it's going to be a free for all. So because, you know, the, the verification of, uh, period of the beast in his system is up. So that's why I said when you understand the mythology of the Yakub story, Yakub, he said, I will create a people who will rule over you for six thousand years. That is the Canaanite who controls democracy. Democracy is the shadow deep state government. So, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Get this video out there. End of transmission.